Hey everybody, welcome back to Supercard. So, you should know by now, this week's team event is a Road to Glory featuring Kane. Jump in now and compete. No, oh, pictures are missing, whatever. Um, so yeah, 19 and 8. Um, there's only one other human, but I slept for a lot. And I didn't want to play too much because, uh, of course, I'm trying, you know, for the ladder rewards and stuff. So, okay, so my team's moved up all the way to the legendary card now. Let's go into the ladder rewards right here. So you can see we are two games away from our final ladder reward. It's a Survivor Diva. There are only three Divas that I don't already have a single of. Which is Alicia Fox. Uh, Natalia, because I already have a Pro and a Bailey. So hopefully it's not one of those, but I know because I've said it, it is going to be one. Uh, I pulled a second uh, Survivor Sting today. Uh, I've made a pro of that now, so now I'm just working on uh, leveling that up. So let's just get into this. We're only going to be doing uh, two games because, you know, it's it's 12.30 and I've got to head out soon. <laughs> uh, I missed Raw tonight. I, w I, was at, uh, I was at work the whole shift. I didn't have a chance to watch it. Uh, I caught up on a recap. Um... I'm going to talk about Dean Ambrose losing the Intercontinental title, but uh, I was able to watch, I got home in time for, I actually forgot Big Show was going to be on the Stone Cold Podcast today, I kind of saw the ending of Raw, and then they said, you know, go to the network now because Big Show's going to be on there, I was like, oh, I like I like the Stone Cold Podcast, uh, I don't like, like how they did the Ric Flair one or the Shawn Michaels one where, you know, it was at Austin's ranch, I didn't like that, I like it when they're, you know, live backstage, because you really do get a anything can happen kind of thing. It's not pre-taped, you know, Austin, you know, if he asks a question that uh, they don't want to hear, you know, you, uh, you get a genuine reaction from them. So it was interesting to hear things, you know, from Big Show, um... You know, if you if you have followed anything with Big Show, you did know it was Hulk Hogan who got him into the business. Uh, you know, when how he helped him get in, and how you know they always bring this up. How Big Show's first match in WCW, he won the um, the, the World Heavyweight Title from Hulk Hogan. They keep saying it like you know he you know beat him up and you know pinned him one two three right in the middle of the ring. If you go watch, if you go back and watch Halloween Havoc, 1995, uh, the Yeti, or as they called him in WCW, the Yete, which wasn't a Yeti, it was a mummy, uh, they, like, beat up Hulk Hogan, but there was a stipulation that if, oh, even, I guess all the PCC cards are doing it right now, there was, like, a stipulation that if Hogan lost the match by disqualification, he would still lose the title. And that's how Big Show won the title, through disqualification. They never, they don't talk about that, they never bring that up. So, that's how Big Show won his first, uh, world title. But it was interesting to hear, you know, him talking about, like, who trained him. I didn't know it was Triple H that trained him, apparently, along with Terry Taylor. But, um... You know, they they brought up Hulk Hogan a lot. They were showing pictures of Hogan and stuff like that, which is making me think, like, I read, like, a rumor that they're thinking of bringing Hogan back for WrestleMania because, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're short for people right now with all the injuries. And, like, hey, it is looking more and more like, you know, they're kind of easing up on the whole Hogan thing, you know, Hogan doesn't help himself with, uh, you know, just, just go to his Twitter and look at things he retweets, that's enough, it's <laughs> enough information for you, but, um, yeah, they're bringing him up a lot, whereas before, like, you know, you, you know, you couldn't say anything, it's like when The Rock, you know, did his, well, we're gonna go off the script, and, you know, he got out of the ring, and he was talking to the guy dressed up as Hulk Hogan. If any other wrestler did that, you know, they'd be suffering a worse fate than Titus O'Neil right now, which apparently, Vince wanted to fire Titus O'Neil over grabbing his arm. But it was uh, Triple H and Joey Mercury that, uh, you know, kind of calmed him down, 
and you know this the suspension was good enough i guess uh there was a video that came out from like a fan's point of view where um hey yeah, title match uh, they were right by the entrance ramp, and they caught they got that part on camera. When he grabbed his arm, like Vince, like turned with like closed fists, like you know, like ready to deck Titus O'Neil. So that's you know that's kind of scary that he was ready to just deck someone. Like I don't even think you can try and argue that he thought it was a fan that got up there because you know the entire roster was on was on the stage, you know, somebody would have stopped, uh, you know, a fan trying to attack Vince McMahon, you know, maybe Nails is, you know, he's, you know, he's back for, you know, the SummerSlam payoff or something, and if you don't know who Nails is, um, you're not missing much, <laughs> um, but it is an interesting story, no, it's not one that I'm going to talk about, but it's an interesting story, so, Dean Ambrose, no longer the Intercontinental Champion. Uh, Kevin Owens is once again Intercontinental Champion. They announced a Fatal Five Way at the beginning of Raw, but you know, with the stipulation, if Roman Reigns showed up in the match to help out Dean Ambrose, Dean Ambrose would be disqualified. He'd lose the title. Yada yada yada, whatever. And so, you know, they got the belt off of him, which I think the reason they did that is to put even more doubt into our heads that, you know, maybe Roman Reigns isn't going to win at Fastlane. Because if he went into the match as Intercontinental Champion, you know, they're not going to have Dean Ambrose win. We're not going to have another Ultimate Challenge at WrestleMania. So that's what I believe. Uh, speaking of the Ultimate Challenge, there's the Ultimate Warrior. So that's, that's what I believe for it. They just did that so to put doubt into our heads now that, hey, maybe Dean Ambrose is going to win. I did see someone speculate that Dean Ambrose will win, and then Roman Reigns will, you know, I never got my rematch from losing the belt, and then we have another triple threat main event, which I guess would make it three WrestleManias in a row that, you know, the world title is defended in a triple threat match, because... Um... There was, at 30, we had, you know, Batista, Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan. Last year, it was kind of a triple threat match, I guess. You know, at the end, it became a triple threat match, which was a fantastic match. I'll give them that. Uh, and it looks like, you know, potentially this year they could do Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Brock Lesnar. I think if they don't do it this year... Which card is this? Oh... Apparently, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. If you change the image, it's just the PCC image that doesn't show up. Um, what was I going to say now? Uh, now I remember. I truly believe if Seth Rollins never got injured, this year's main event for WrestleMania would have been Dean Ambrose against Roman Reigns against Seth Rollins for the title, which, you know, I'm waiting for the first proper Shield triple threat match where it's the three of them against each other because that's going to be cool to see so we have reached 30,000 games it's whew, it's felt like an eternity we're going to get the final ladder reward that is currently offered in this game it is going to be a random diva I'm hoping for one of the Bellas I would like I would like Nikki uh, not Nikki sorry I would like Bree as my reward and you know this is the most tense thing ever as we seem to be stuck on this loading screen and you know I'll move this as much as I want I don't know why this is stuck I'll give it a couple more seconds and if not I'm, I'll pause oh here we go oh is it okay Chief by playing 30,000 games, it's a Sasha Banks, it makes a brand new pro, we now have four Survivor Pro Divas, I'm very happy with that Sasha Banks, because she's, she's a very good card, so I guess I gotta start working on that now, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with that uh, Sasha Banks, I'll, you know, I'll get right on uh, working that into making a pro, you know, 
And so I made a Sting Pro today. Work on the Sasha Banks to make a pro of that. And then w once we finish this cane, hopefully tomorrow by the time I wake up. I don't like actually doing the Survivor card because you know, it's just constant event pros. And I don't want to deal with that. That's what my team can deal with that. Uh, that cane will make a pro as well. And then when Road to Glory comes in on Thursday, hopefully by the Friday, uh, we, you know, we'll be getting Ric Flair. So that's a new event pro. Hopefully we can even make a, a good pro from the Survivor undercard. So... The deck is looking quite good, um, I'll work on that Sasha as quick as I can to make a pro in time for Road to Glory, and we can see a full Survivor Pro lineup. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you all for watching. Please take care.